About a year ago, I made this video called The Basic Set in Hearthstone is Really Bad. It was about the basic set in Hearthstone being really bad. Now, over time, this became the most watched video on this channel. Must have been recommended to pretty much all of you. And so I thought, let's make another video in a similar style. We will not talk about the exact same things as in that video, where we just compare cards in the basic set to cards that get printed later on, but we will take a look at some reprints. Cards that get created a couple years later after the original card came out, that just make the old card completely useless. While the number one card that comes to mind is obviously Silverback Patriarch, as there are like a dozen plus cards that have the exact same stats or better for the same mana cost, we will only look at a couple basic cards and focus more on cards from older expansions that got reprinted and made better. And the very first thing that came to mind when I had the idea for this video was Innovate. Innovate got nerfed, so it gives you only one mana crystal this turn instead of two. For example, during the Knights of the Frozen Throne era, you used to use Innovate on turn one and summon a Flappy Bird, a vicious fledgling, on your first turn, which in Arena was incredibly broken. So over time, Innovate got nerfed. But then in the recent expansion called Skolomance Academy, we got dual class cards, meaning cards that are playable in two different classes. Now, one of those cards is called Lightning Bloom, which reads gain two mana crystals this turn only, Overload 2 which means it is the exact same version as the old Innovate as it gives you two mana crystals for one turn, with a slight downside that your next turn is going to be minus two mana as you overload it. Here's the problem. Nobody played Innovate for the next turn. You always played it to get an immediate effect to just win. To win the early game, to win in the mid game, maybe to have like 14 mana available. And because of Lightning Bloom, we can do exactly the same thing as before. I personally don't see the point in nerfing Innovate, but then printing Lightning Bloom, which has the same effect. And the same is true for Elven Archer. Elvenarcher reads deal 1 damage. Why exactly do we have Penflinger now? It is exactly as Elvenarcher. The exact same thing, but if you cast a spell by Penflingers on the board, it triggers the spellburst effect, which means you can return this minion to your hand. With that, you pretty much have infinite Elven Archers as long as you cast a spell over and over, which is actually possible in Paladin. In Paladin, we have this one funny card called Labyrinth of Wisdom, which is Explorer's Head for Hunter, but there's one thing to it. While it has the exact same effect as Explorer's Hat, you can reduce the cost of Labyrinth of Wisdom so it only costs zero mana, forever. If you play any of the Labyrinth support cards, they are going to reduce the cost of Wisdom so it is zero mana for the rest of this game. Which brings us back to Penflinger and Elven Archer. Penflinger is like Elven Archer, but it can play it up to 20 times, maybe even more. So yeah, nice reprint. Actually, there's more than just Penflinger that is like Elven Archer, but better. In April 2020, we had the Ashes of Outland expansion, which brought us those three minions. Guardian, Rocket, and Ethereal Arc Merchant. Those have the exact same effect as Elven Archer, they have plus one attack each, and they also can be used on your own minions or enemy minions to gain an additional effect. Or in other words, there are at least four cards, probably a lot more, that are just a way better than Elven Archer. But that is again just picking on the basic set. If you focus on the cards like Explorer's Hat and Labyrinth of Wisdom, there's the next thing that comes to mind. The classic set in Hearthstone. At some point, Paladin apparently became too strong so they had to nerf equality from 2 mana to 4 mana. And then in the same expansion as Library of Wisdom, we also got Library of Justice, which again can be reduced with the Library support cards, so it costs anywhere between 0 and 5 mana. Equality changes the health of all minions on the field, meaning your minions as well. Library of Justice changes only the health of enemy minions and also gives you a 1-4 weapon to clear those minions. Since Library of Justice came out, I've not seen a single person ever playing Equality. There's just no purpose in playing that. But similar things happened years ago. When Mean Streets of Gadgetton were released in 2016, cards like Stranglehorn Tigerhorn the Classic set were reprinted but better in form of Lotus Assassin. Has the same mana cost, same stats, but the stealth effect can happen again. Now recently we got this very fun card for Druid called Twilight Runner. Has also 5 mana, 5 attack, only 4 health, but is still a beast. The difference is, whenever this attacks you draw 2 cards. So the difference between Stranglehorn Tiger and Twilight Runner is that the one card draws you two cards and wins you the game, and the other card has plus one health. This also happened to Vorgan Infiltrator, a woman at 2-1 stealth minion from the classic set. We have a class-specific card called Spy Mistress now, which is the exact same card, but it has plus one attack. Which then makes you think, why would anybody ever play Vorgan Infiltrator if you own double Spy Mistress? And while we talk about rock cards, there's one that is quite similar to another card in the classic set. Ravenhood Assassin, like the last two cards, has stealth. And now we have this cursed guy here. It's a 7 mana 7 5, which when it dies summons a 7 5 with stealth. So it is exactly Ravenhold Assassin, but it has twice the stats in total. Now I guess the big difference here would be that it doesn't start with a stealth effect. Think about it, if nobody ever plays Cursed Vagrant, why would anybody ever decide to play Ravenhold Assassin? Then we should take a look at effects that affect the hero power. For certain fun combos on the game, you used to play Fence and Couch, so the next time you use your hero power, it costs two less. 
But now we have Tour Guide, which for two mana less is only missing one one in stats, but makes your hero power cost zero. And as the card is also one mana, you could play Emperor Torreson and just play the card for free, but Fencing Coach would still cost mana. Same card, just a lot better. Nobody ever played Steam Beetle Sniper unless you played something like an even hunter. Now we have Draven Sharpshooter though, which sees play in I think almost every single hunter deck. Making it so that the hero power can target minions makes Hunter almost a viable class. If you play a normal Hunter deck without any restrictions from either Gen or Baku, you would just always play Dwarven Sharpshooter as you can play it on turn 1 and it has pretty much the same stats as Steam Beetle Sniper. What could technically count into this type of video, but is still a bit different would be Gang Up and Lab Recruiter. When you play Mill Rogue to shuffle your Codelite Oracle or your Nazarth into your deck over and over, you either stall the opponent for the entire game or make them burn the entire deck and eventually die to fatigue. Now the difference between Gang Up and Lap Recruiter is, Gang Up can be countered as it is a spell, but it can also be used using preparation. Lap Recruiter on the other hand, not just provides your stats on the field, but it is also a lot harder to counter Battlecry. So far we only have a couple minions that make it so that Battlecry minions cost a lot more next turn. But there are a bunch of things that can counter spells. And talking about spells, let's take a look at two for Mage. One is called Shatter, which reads Destroy a Frozen Minion. Now a couple years later, we get this card called Snap Freeze, which can freeze a minion and if it's already frozen, destroys it. So it has the effect of Shatter, plus the effect that it freezes something if it isn't already frozen. Which then gets you thinking, why do we still have Shatter? Nobody would ever play that if Snap Freeze exists. Maybe the design team for Hearthstone knows. And the biggest question I would ask them is, why exactly do we have Jeeves, which used to see play in Token Druid or very aggressive decks, but then we get Voracious Reader in the last expansion? For almost the exact same stats, it costs 2 mana less and it only benefits you and not your opponent. The Voracious Reader itself made it so that token decks, like Token Druid, became one of the highest win rate decks in the entire game. With our 70% win rate, the deck is incredible. And Voracious Reader is a big reason why it is so good. Torrent, which deals 8 damage to a minion and costs 3 less if you cast a spell last turn, is almost crushing hand for Shaman, but you don't overload and it's 1 mana less. You could also compare this just to Flamelands and Mage. So Torrent is not just 1 mana less, it can also potentially be 4 mana less than Flamelands. And Flamelands is very similar to Rolling Fireball, which can clear not just one minion, but all the minions on the enemy's field. Since Rolling Fireball came out, why would there be any reason to play Flamelands over it? The only weird scenario I could think about is if you would like to remove exactly one minion, but next to it there would be something like an Acolyte of Pain. But that is such a rare scenario that I think that will never happen in the entirety of Hearthstone. So many spells, and yet just a couple minions have spell damage, like Evolved Cobalt. Evolved Cobalt used to see play in something like a Freeze or OTK Mage. In Boomsday though, we get Cosmic Anomaly, which is the exact same card, but has plus 2 plus 1 in stats. And is also an elemental, so it not just has synergy with things, but can also be reduced and potentially have lifesteal if you play Frostlit Jaina. The same is true for Street Trickster in Gadget Sun. It is a 3 mana 0 7 demon with the effect spell damage plus 1. Well, we got a 2 mana version of the exact same card, which is an elemental, and is only missing 1 health. Then I can only think about 1 down and 1 upside. The upset would be, if you play Street Trickster and Warlock and you use any effect that resurrects demons, you could resurrect that one. But if you face somebody using Light's Champion, one of the most useless cards ever made, they would be able to silence that. Mana Reservoir, on the other hand, being an elemental, could be targeted with a card like Sandbinder to be drawn from your deck. Well, yeah, those cards are just not good. Know what else is not good? Wicked Skeleton. This minion gains plus one plus one for each minion that died this turn, which is terrible. You know, a card that is equally bad, but still better and sees no play? It's called Blood Herald for Demon Hunter and Hunter. Even though it's only for friendly minions, but it's forever. So this could technically be something like a Blubber Baron, where it just gets more, more stats and never sees play because the card is terrible. Almost as terrible as Ancient of Law, which got nerfed like 3-4 years ago. One of the first nerfs that I personally witnessed when I started playing the game. Anyways, it's a 7 mana 5-5 five, five for Druid, which has the effect that you either draw a card or you restore 5 health. This minion used to be able to draw 2 cards from your deck and saw play in the OTK Druid. Not really OTK, but it was Force of Nature into Savage Draw, which dealt 14 damage. Eventually though, Ram Druid became a little bit worse when Force of Nature got nerfed, but yet again Ancient of Law remained at 7 mana. Meaning that all those 5 mana 5-5 five, five minions, like Big Whelp, that giant chonker there, beautiful minion, have the exact same effect of drawing a card, but cost 2 mana less. If you would have something like Fandral Starcom on the board, or the effect of Osirian Tear, you could have both effects combined, but do you really want to spend 2 more mana to get 5 health? Probably not. And I think so far nobody in Hearthstone ever did. Ah, bad cards. 
One of them that I opened like four years ago was Mukla Tarrant of the Veil. Vale. It's a six mana five five monkey which adds two bananas to your hand. Those bananas give you a minion plus one plus one. You would only ever play a minion with an effect like that if you would like to get extra spells for something like Antonidas, or if you need to finish your open the way get quest, which requires you to cast eight spells that didn't start in your deck. That would be good and all, but we have Banana Buffoon, which is the exact same minion, but you can play two of those. It's only a common, and it costs minus three mana. The very last thing on my list is Fool's Bane and Warglaze of Azinoth. Warglaze recently got nerfed, so it costs 6 mana instead of 5, but it was the exact same mana cost, the exact same attack and durability, but Fool's Bane was limited to only attack minions, unless you have something like Major Noggin Fog on the field, which could mean that you do hit the enemy's face, but Warglaze of Azinoth had no restriction. So you used to play the card on turn 5, remove the entire board of the enemy, and then also swing face for like 8 damage, because Demon Hunter has a very easy time to buff their attack. With those two cuts I put into the thumbnail, Ash, Tongue, Battle Lord, and Sentient Shieldmaster, I just wanted to make one point. In which unlikely scenario would any player, whether veteran or new, ever decide to play the old minion with a worse effect than the new minion with an additional effect? There's no point in ever playing Sentient Shieldmaster if you have the exact same mana cost, attack, and health on a minion, and in addition to that also has lifesteal, so you can heal while that is on the bot. There is just no point. The Hearthstone designer team did mention that in 2021 in April, the basic set is going to be reworked. Now every single time my expectations go up for Hearthstone, they get crushed. And that is still 6 months until the April expansion comes out. Meaning that until then, all I can do is look at the classic and basic cards and think to myself, why do those even exist? Making cards with the same effect that are just better is not bad for the game. I'm just asking, as it is a digital card game, why don't we just cut the old cards out of that and give the new players the better cards? Like remove Stompike Commander from the basic set, put in Borrowing Scopet, and nobody will ever complain or notice. But I guess that is not for me to determine. My name's Solom from Twitch.television. Maybe you want to stop by at some point. We stream there like five times a week, starting at 2 p.m. CET. A majority of you are not subscribed yet, and you can always unsubscribe in case you don't like the content. And it's only one click away. You can leave a like, and with that, Take care.